Welcome back inside Arizona Daily Mix. Joining me right now is Tom Wilwright. He's a CPA and author of Tax Free Wealth. And we're going to get down and dirty with some tax information. And Tom, I'm counting on you because I understand that you make taxes fun. Absolutely. What isn't <laughs> fun about taking money out of the government's pocket and putting it into your pocket? See, that's good if you can you do go. that. But some people don't realize they can do that. And there's so many possibilities mm -hmm. to do it. You know, the, the, the tax law is just full of thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of opportunities. But people don't know that. So today we're going to discuss the five most overlooked deductions to put money in your pocket. Nice. We like that. So why should people not shy away from the home office deduction? Well, so like the, the worst thing I ever hear is I'll hear somebody say, my accountant told me not to take this deduction because it will raise a red flag and the IRS will come get you. Hmm. And I'm going, you know what, there's a, a, a really easy way to remember how to never be afraid of the IRS. Okay, and what's that way? Okay, you just repeat after me. All right. Ready? I will never. I will never. Speak to. Speak to. The IRS. The IRS. There you go. You never do it. That's no. my job. Okay. I can take care of that. You don't have to worry about it. And if there's a deduction in the mm -hmm. tax law that's available, it's because the government wants you to take that deduction. Okay, now some people, are just now doing their taxes and if they have a home office what are some of the things they can deduct oh there's so much you can deduct I mean of course you can deduct the actual supplies and mm -hmm. everything you do there but you can deduct a portion of your utilities oh nice. a portion of your mortgage interest it may be deductible otherwise but it's even better deductible there mm. your taxes your even your uh, your your uh, housekeeper so, really? Right. So, because they're taking care of your home office, right? That that's true. So there's a proportion, even a proportion of what you paid for the house. Well, that's interesting to so know. So there's a lot to take, and what most people don't understand uh -huh. is that when you take a home office deduction, if you're self-employed, you know, you mm -hmm. have your your own business, you actually get to increase your car expense. Really? Now that's that. good to know because a lot of people don't even track the gas, their right. mileage to and from if they are right. doing business. So how can you maximize that and well, get the most, you can get that money back. Right. So what happens is, is that, it, you know, the IRS says that the first trip you take during the day is a commute, right? right? You come here, mm -hmm. it's a commute. Absolutely. But if your first commute is 30 feet to your home office, that's your commute. Okay. So everything after that is deductible. So you can almost double your car expense just wow. by taking a home office deduction. Now a lot of people, they do this even if they don't have a home business, the meals and entertainment, they're trying to write it off, but how can you do it <laughs> in the proper way so you can get this accounted for so you can well, maximize it? You actually need to have a business. Okay, okay? there you so go. You, but, your, but your business could be, you might be investing in real estate, mm -hmm. you might be have uh, an internet business or a multi-level marketing business, mm. doesn't have to be a big business. Okay, any business will do mm -hmm. as long as you have that business. Now, for example, when you go out to dinner with your spouse and you're talking about business, that's deductible. If you're going out to dinner with your spouse and you're discussing business, you can write off that. Absolutely, it, it, because when you're talking to your spouse, I mean, what do you talk about when you go out to dinner? I mean, yeah, it's nice to say that you're romantic and everything. Yeah, they talk know, about the kids. We know and what you're business. really talking okay. about. You're really talking about the business. And, okay. and, and I find even people whose spouse isn't involved in the business, mm -hmm. They talk about the business because they're looking for feedback on what should I do here, what should I do here. So you can maximize that as well and you just keep those receipts and you put a portion or you say this dinner was specifically. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, and it's important to keep, you know, you bring up a good point, Daniel, because it's important to keep your receipts and really document it really well. Mm -hmm. um, I like to say that if, if you pretend to document, you get a pretend deduction. Right, you absolutely. Know, you don't really, you, you have to document. If mm -hmm. you've got the documentation, you don't need to worry about it. The IRS, all they're looking for is the documentation. Now let's talk about travel expense, because some people do, they travel a lot throughout the year for their job. A lot of people now who are self-employed, this is how they make their money. They do speaking engagements, or they go to meet a client somewhere out of state to talk about new business and bringing that on to their business. So how can they deduct all of that as well? Oh, what's great is, is that all you have to do is spend 51% of your time on business. So let's say that you were to go travel for mm -hmm. your business, right? And you spend four and a half hours during the day on business. You can spend the rest of the day 
enjoying yourself, being on oh, vacation. Okay. Because as long as the primary purpose for the trip, so that's over half the day, mm -hmm. is for business, the whole thing's deductible. So you can count the, the rental car if you had to get one, the hotel, any Absolutely. meals that you purchased there. Absolutely. If you had to buy some items for the meeting that you were having, you can count, count all that off. You know, even if you get your, 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 uh, your, your dress dry cleaned while you're traveling, you can deduct nice. that. Nice. See, these are good tips to know because I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't know this. So let's talk about the education. As you said, there's a difference in continuing your education versus a seminar. And how do you write those off? And how do you tell the difference? Well, the IRS hates seminars. Okay, oh, okay. they think anytime you go to seminar, that's personal. That's not going to be deductible oh. at all, right? However, what they do like is, well, but if you're in a profession, you're in a mm -hmm. profession, you're very good at your profession, and you go to a seminar for continuing education, that's oh, different. That's so different. how you report it on your tax return makes a big difference. Tom, you were fantastic. And I have to tell you, he made the taxes fun. Lots of good information. So get those deductions. Make sure you keep your receipts and write off as much as you can so you can get that money in your pocket and not the government. Absolutely. Great having you on the show. Tom will write more information on our website, aztv.com, and his book, Tax-Free Wealth. Don't go anywhere. We're going to have more.